hi, it's me again, I'm back with another tutorial. Now that you know who I am, there's no need for formal introductions. So let's get started. This is the most requested pattern so far. This is the three piece face mask. This design is special because the nose and the chin flaps fold in and help protect the inside from contamination when you put it down. Adapt the pattern to the type of mask you want to make. Always pre-wash your fabrics and interfacing before starting any projects. My chosen fabrics today is a Japanese rabbit print, textured 100% cotton fabric by Koka Dobby. The lining is 100% cotton, butterfly and insect print in mustard yellow by Michael Miller. Both fabrics bought from the website down in the description. Interfacing is not too important if not pre-washed, but more like pre-treat as in soak it and let it dry rather than put it in a full wash. We are folding the fabric over. This will also gauge how much fabric we will need. I am just eyeballing this for now. Double check with the biggest pattern. Give it a press. Pin the patterns down roughly. I am just eyeballing this for now. Then roughly cut it out. I am going to apply the interfacing to the main fabric. My interfacing isn't wide enough but long enough. Most people would just place it like this. If it's a craft project, then it's fine, but I like to do things properly. Look at the way the interfacing rips. There is a grain. Place it in the same direction as the fabric grain line. Press with a medium to high heat or check the interfacing instructions. Don't worry if there's a slight overlap in the middle, this will be trimmed away. Fold the fabric and make both edges parallel. I am going to eyeball this. Cut both layers out together, this will save time. Pin on the edge to stop the fabrics from shifting. Now that we know if both edges are parallel, place the pattern pieces on and check with a ruler. You don't have a set number to follow, just make the green line on the pattern pieces parallel to one edge of the fabric. In this case, it is the folded edge. This will take time. Always check two points using the green line on the pattern piece. This piece will allow me to cut two pieces of the main fabric and two pieces of the lining fabric. I am cutting this off because the pattern piece number one only needs one piece of main fabric and one piece of lining fabric. If I cut it like this, I will be wasting fabric. Reposition the fabric and repin the pattern piece on grain. Now secure and cut out the pattern pieces.
See this notch marking? Don't cut it out. It's just to tell you where to top stitch later on. Match up your pattern pieces ready to be sewn. One main fabric and one lining fabric together with right size touching. Prepare your elastic too. Leave an opening where a straight edge is. Sew around each pair of fabrics. It makes it easier to bag it out later. Please note, you have a 1cm seam allowance on the pattern. Back stitch the beginning. I am using slightly smaller seam allowance here because I am making it for a bigger person and I can't be bothered sizing it up bigger than the large pattern. You could do this too if you want to make it slightly bigger but you must use the same seam allowance for all your patterns. Here I left a gap of about 3cm and backstitch the end. I'm leaving a gap on this edge. Backstitch and sew around. I know some people might find it hard to sew curved edges. By the time this tutorial goes up, I will release a new pattern with straight edges just to please everyone. How about that? Leave a 3cm gap at the end again and backstitch the end. Double check both sides. As you can see, even I'm not perfect every time. Go over that edge again. Do your best. Now at every curved edges, trim and cut like this. Careful not to cut into the seam allowance. You can cut down the seam allowance before doing this if you like, but try and leave the opening seam allowance alone. Makes it easier to tuck in later. Get a chopstick or any stick for this. It makes it easier to bag it out. Open a little pocket and pop the fabric inside out. Bagging out is a term for turning your project inside out, so the right side is outside. Chopsticks are great for these jobs because this is fairly blunt and dot mark. Make sure to get to all the corners. Make sure at the straight edges, run the chopstick along the seam. Don't worry if you over poked and made a little oopsie. We can rectify small holes later when we are pressing. If you ever get to these inverted curve seams, you'll have to turn it out to snip it. This will allow it to lie flat. Ok, prepare your elastic. If it's made from synthetic fibres, it will melt with a flame. This will stop it from fraying. Whatever you do, please don't burn down the house. Now press all the pieces with an iron.
I use tweezers to help push any raw seams in. I find it great for fiddly jobs. Place the chin and the nose flap onto the main fabric piece, lining and touching each other. Match up the pointy edges in the middle. Your elastic needs to be put in place, but before we can do that, to make it extra secure, tie a knot. Sandwich this in place. Use pins if you need to. Use a nose bar if you have one available. It makes it more fitted around the nose. Place this into one of the flaps, right against the straight edge. You could experiment with jewellery wire. The most important thing is, you are going to wash these and reuse it. Whatever you use, just make sure it doesn't rust. Put a pin to hold it in place. We are now going to sew around to secure the elastic at the same time. Put pins in to help by pinning from outside in. It makes it easier to remove as you sew. Make sure the elastic ends are tucked in in all four corners. Now we are going to edge stitch close to the edge. I'm going to use the inside of my presser foot as a guide. Move the needle position if you need to. Sew around, you can back stitch at the beginning When you are sewing around curved edges, make sure you pick up the presser foot frequently and you can back stitch on the elastic just to make sure it's secure. Back stitch at the end. I am not sewing in between the elastics. Jump over to the next elastic, back stitch and sew. Continue this until all the edges is edge stitched. We are now going to edge stitch the nose and chin flaps. Start where the previous sewing was left off. Back stitch, sew close to the edge. Back stitch. The flap of the pin in, shift the bar out of the way so you can sew at the edge. Repeat.
Remove the pin and shift the bar up. Secure with a pin. Now sew and secure the nose bar. Back stitch the beginning. Use your fingers to draw a line against the metal bar to see where to sew. I have seen somewhere where people are using size 12 gauge jewelry wire to replace the nose bar. You need to test it out to see if it rusts if you're planning to use it in this mask. Pass stitch the end. You can use the mask like this with a filter but the shape won't be as good. I'm going to show you how to stitch the final details. See the markings that look like notches? That is where we're going to start your top stitching. From roughly the side of the elastic, sew to the point. Pull extra thread out of the needle before you start sewing. Here is a little tip for those that can't sew straight without drawing a line. Needle and press a foot down, do a back stitch. Bring press the foot up and bring the thread to the front. Place it where you want to stop. Now you have a guide to sew a straight line. You can keep your needle in a down position. Pick up the press the foot, bring the thread to the next position if you like. I'm just going to complete this as normal. Remember to backstitch. Repeat on the other side. So that's it. I hope you give this pattern a try. This is one of my favourite patterns too. The next few patterns I will be releasing will allow you to use a filter with it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe or follow for more from me at Shani Makes. Here's a little gift for you. You will be able to download this envelope. Just go to my website. You can keep all your patterns organised. Thanks for watching. See you next time.